decided that uh, COVID-19 requires some beard work. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, you appear to be ahead of me. Well, I mean, I, I had a beard prior to COVID-19, so it was just uh, just uh, helping it along, I guess. A little bit of a head start. Yeah. Huh. Yours looks good, though. Mine looks awfully salty. So <laughs> That's not, not a bad uh, thing. Not like back in the days when we first met. It was a little more... Uh, mm. A little darker. But that was what, uh, eight years ago, nine years ago now? Uh, I think it's eight, like just under. Yeah. So Hootie, wow. and I were, Hootie and I were joking that we've been through high school and college together. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much, yeah. Years. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I know I sent you a text about this, but the heads, heads up on the cocktail hour is <laughs> it's an Americano. Okay, which is, I figured. Campari, vodka, and soda. Equal parts. Okay. So, okay. Cleaned up Negroni, that kind of thing. Okay, there you go. Um, in your honor. But And that was an early day thing. <laughs> we went out to Oakland um, doing like a demo with the Golden State Warriors. Uh, and I just stumbled into this place um, just trying to find some food. And that was a special. I had no idea. Okay. Became a favorite. So, how's life with COVID-19? It's going, man, just um, adjusting to, you know, being at home, working from home. Um, I was actually just talking to some of our staff earlier. Um, can't believe, I mean, it's been, this is week four, week five now. You know, it doesn't seem like it. When you turn around, it's like, man, i um, been home for a month. So, but, uh, but overall, it's going. So how are you guys kind of just jumping right into it? Because it seems like it's a hot topic everywhere. Like, yeah. how have you guys decided to sort of deal with the fact that everybody's remote like that right now? Yeah, so um, basically as a staff, um, we decided to, you know, we came up with some general uh, guidelines that we want each of the staff members to follow. So as a department, we're, we're uniform, um, but also giving each individual strength coach the freedom to do what they feel is best because they're going to know what's the best for their particular program All right so you know you got some programs that are you know um just finishing up some programs that were getting getting started you know and so like like a baseball program for example or a rowing program who now their their next season is now a year from now versus you know basketball we just finished right. up or or um you know a fall sport who's getting ready to start gearing up so rather than try to make everyone do the same thing to really just let the, each individual strength coach kind of, you know, um, decide what's going to be best based on, you know, their coaching staff and what they got going on. Now we do have certain guidelines that we want to follow, like in, in, in terms of how many times a week we want to check in with the athletes, how many times a week we want to check in with each other, how many times a week we want to check in with the coaching staff. So those types of things. Um, but yeah, really just letting, um, so we've got kind of everything across the board and from, you know, your standard old school PDF um, files to, you know, a, a good majority of our teams are using Elite Form to get their programs um, to, um, you know, putting videos up, uh, you know, everything across the board, really. So it's actually been a good opportunity for us to learn from each other, too. So is what have you done? But this is going to sound so formal, but uh, for those who don't know, you handle women's basketball, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and like, what have you done specific to their situation? Um, just given all this nonsense. Yeah. So, you know, we were um, obviously on the back end of our season uh, when this all hit. Uh, I think it was uh, March 12th and, and we were you know, planning on uh, going to postseason. Um, so we're, we're at the, you know, our season just ended, right? So um, honestly, my general philosophy, you know, regardless of, you know, COVID or, 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 you know, the situation we're in now, my general philosophy after the season is to give them some time off, let them recover mentally, let them recover physically, um, you know, because we've been going since, you know, the third week of September pretty, pretty heavy. So um from that standpoint, I, it wasn't a huge concern for me right away in terms of like what they were doing from a training standpoint, because I normally would give them two weeks off minimum completely, you know, literally to the point where I say, and I tell them, I was like, this is the only time you're going to hear me say, say this all year, but, you know, 
if you don't want to work out, don't work out. You know, be a be a normal college. How dare you? Say <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, be a normal experience. What what it feels like to be a normal college student, right? You know. Um, and so I tell you know if they, if they want to work out by by all means go ahead but don't I don't I don't want it to be structured I want it to be more for the purely for the enjoyment of it versus I'm doing this because I have to do this so um, so that's my 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 just thought initially in terms of when our season ends uh, so I, you know I took the same approach and, and obviously there's a, a much more um, emotional stress involved with this particular year in terms of you know, wanting to make the tournament and, and knowing we were in the tournament and then obviously the season just abruptly ending like it did. Um, so with that, I was okay with them taking even more time off if they need. And I also want them to make sure that they're healed too. Because the last thing I want is them coming into the summer, um, you know, was still having nagging injuries that never were properly rehabbed from the season because they jumped back into it too fast. So really focus on rehab and rest and recovery postseason. Now with that, um, you know, obviously we have to start getting to a point where we have to start doing something. Sure. So specifically for women's basketball, um, you know, there and, and so for them, you know, we opened our new facility um, this past this past September. Uh, basketball, both men's and women's basketball, wrestling, and women's gymnastics. And so, um, luckily for you know for those particular programs, they were already using elite form and we're familiar with it and so we we, we kind of had a, a almost like a, a test run uh, over the winter break um in terms of you know this is going to be the new way that we're going to deliver programs anytime you're off campus now that we have this system so they so my girls were already familiar with it which was which was good um so they already had their login inf information etc so that in terms of um them learning that like that was pretty easy but, uh, you mean in terms of like like remote street cards, like just sending them stuff out? Yeah, there. so like okay. obviously like in, in the past, you know, before we had Elite Form, you know, we didn't have the we didn't have anything online. So it was me literally putting something up on a website or on a on their through their Teamworks calendar where they could they could download it as a PDF and then they pull the program up there. So so just the whole you know you have a you have a username, you have a password that that was that was all new in over winter break. And then, but they had had that experience already, so it was pretty easy from transition from that standpoint. Uh, what we've done specifically with women's basketball is, um, so basically, I started with, um, you know, giving them something, giving them an option to do something every day of the week, um, alternating between strength and mobility. So one day is a strength day, next day is a mobility day. And, I, and the way I, I presented to them was, hey, there's a workout up seven days a week. I don't expect you to work out seven days a week. You know, I'd, I'd like you to get somewhere between three and six. Uh, it's up to you. You should, you should get at least three days in. Um, but also with the NCAA, like we can't mandate it as well. Right. So that's right. the other piece to it. Like we can't, we can't. I can't check in to see if they're doing it or or, or punish them for not doing it. Right. So, um, so yeah. So we started with that. So it, everything was very, very general. Everyone was doing the same thing. Um, in the meantime, while we did that, I got this idea from Mike DeMarco, our, our wrestling strength coach, um, put, I put together like a, uh, a questionnaire via Google uh, Forms or Google Documents and, and sent that out to the team and basically had them fill out what equipment they had access to, right? So I had different categories, you know, cardio, recovery, strength training, et cetera, accessories. So I got an idea for what kids had access to and what kids I knew didn't have anything at home, right? So, you know... I had a couple of kids that actually have full weight sets at home, you know, so, oh, nice. um, so I'm going to use that more in the coming weeks to start to then individualize their programs a little bit more. Um, other things that we did was we, we sent out, um, actually had one of our professional interns, um, film the workouts, almost like a, a follow along. Um, so that way if they had any questions, they could, um, they could look, they could see it. And so cool. what he did was he filmed them. So I sent them what I wanted him to film. He filmed it. He sent it back to me. And then I, um, like, overlaid my coaching cues as if I was coaching him through those lifts. And so it's almost like when you watch it, it's like I'm coaching him through the workout, but it's in real time. So he's doing it as if he was going through the whole workout. Is so that it's like part a, of the, oh, sorry, go ahead. So, so it's really like a follow along. So then he, he sent it back to me and I, I was able to um, make that available to the team. So that way they can 
pause it if they need to, you know, rewind it if they want to, you know, re-listen to the cue. And then they also, that way, they're getting the same cues that I normally would, that they would normally hear from me. So it's almost like I'm taking them through the workout. I'm just not actually there. And, but they're getting that, that visual piece to it as well. Uh, and then the, the last thing we did was we actually uh, got got permission from our, our women's basketball staff to um, purchase some equipment and actually send it out to uh, to our kids at home. Um, so we didn't, sorry, we didn't get a whole lot of stuff. My dog, but... No, it's all good. You'll probably hear, you know, Day, hear, hear one over here too. People walking by, so. so um, but yeah, so we actually purchased some equipment and uh, actually sent it directly to the kids at home as well. And actually, we're actually getting ready to send some more stuff out um, next week. Um, just, just, um, what with the realization, it was basic stuff. So like, um, uh, we sent out like a, a quote unquote recovery warm up pack. So it was like a foam roller, um, a really light, uh, elastic band for like some shoulder prehabs, um, type stuff. Some of the mini bands, like inform better mini bands to go around their knees and their ankles. I think they got six of those. They got a heavier like training band, uh, a sh slash stretch band. Uh, we also sent them, we're sending them a jump rope and some of like the sliders. Um, so that way they, they can, um, that way I know everyone has at least X, Y, Z and I can, you know, um, better, you know, feel more confident in prescribing them stuff that I know that they're going to have the ability to do. You know, like a base level of items. You yeah, know, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, um, cause my, and, my, and also I wanted to make sure that it's something they can do like in their living room. Because I, I, like, I've been encouraging them to stay inside as much as possible. So you know, not, I haven't told them, you know, directly don't go outside, but I've told them everything I'm giving you can be done inside. You don't need to go outside. So I want to, you know, I know different parts of the world, obviously, or different parts of the country or the world, I guess, are, are hit, by, hit, you know, by this virus in varying various ways. And, you know, here in Jersey, we're, we're one of the worst. Um, so if they, if they feel comfortable going outside, that's fine, but I also don't want to pressure them to, to have to go outside. Makes sense. I mean, after you're cooped up for X amount of time, like I know it would have been hard for me not to go down to the park and want to mm -hmm. and, and talking with them, some of them said they, like, they'll go out for, like some of them said they'll go out for a run, um, you know, a couple times a week just, just to get off the house. So, um, so yeah, I've, I've, you know, I meet with them. I check in with them once a week. So every Friday we have a video chat just to kind of catch up, see if anybody has any questions. Um, we've done like a different, uh, different topic. You know, I've, I've taken, so like in the, when, when, normally when they're on campus every week, once a week, I'll, I'll give them like a lesson, you know? So I've kind of continued with that, just obviously doing that virtually now. So we've been doing that the last couple of weeks and, uh, and, uh, yeah, going from there. So what would be an example of like a, a lesson you would give? So like, uh, this past week, for example, so the first week, what I did was I asked them, I said, I want, I want you guys to tell me, like, what are you struggling with at home right now? Like, you guys tell me, like, what is it that you, you know, because, you know, from their perspective as an athlete, they go from literally having their entire day planned out, pre-planned for them, um, where they're literally just being told where to go, what to do, to nothing, right? And so I think sometimes we may take it for granted that, you know, some of these, you know, skills they they don't have because they haven't done it before they haven't they haven't had to do it they haven't had to 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 plan out their day when they don't when there's nothing to do so um it's got some feedback from them and, and then base it around that so like for example our last week i took them through how to okay how to create a routine right when you have no routine right so i kind of walked them through my process in terms of you know even though i'm home right i still schedule out parts of my day for for work and parts of my day for you know, for free time. Uh, and I said for them, you know, obviously like you're, you're not working, but like my work would be your academics or it could be basketball, you know? Yeah, so, so you don't, you don't just mean like routine in terms of a workout routine. You're just talking no, I about mean like your day, like your day. Yeah. No, what ends up happening? Yeah. What ends up happening? And a lot of them were, were doing this and I don't, you know, again, I don't blame them. They, they're like, yeah, like I, I'll sleep. I'll wake up at 12, one o'clock, you know? So they haven't eaten anything, right? It's one o'clock. And then you know, they'll, they'll wake up in the morning and go to class and go back to sleep, and then they can't go to sleep at night, and then it's just this cycle of like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So, I was like, that way you don't you don't turn around and look up, look back at your day and, and are like, you know, what did I do? Uh, I've been really big with them on, 
you know, yeah, you're home, but take this opportunity to, to learn some new life skills, right? Learn how to cook, you know, learn, learn some of these things that are going to be helpful for you, um, you know, once this is all over. So, so yeah, so we talked, we did, we did a cooking demo. Um, we did, uh, like I said, we did creating your own routine. Like where I was literally showing, I was like, look, like I, I still get up at six, six o'clock in the morning. Now I don't expect them to, but I was even saying, you know, showing how I, I schedule out my TV time, you know, and I'll schedule out my reading time. And I'll schedule out my work time and, and showing how I break up my day. And, um, just to give them some ideas as to, you know, some, some ways that they can have add some, some of that structure back into their life. I'm going to back you up a half step. Yeah. What's a, what ha, what did you do for a cooking demo? So actually we just posted it on, a, uh, I think yesterday. So, uh, I did, um, I did uh, like a step-by-step step guide. You sent me some pictures. I know you can <laughs> right? I, I, no, I, I, I hook it up in the kitchen now, you know, I like to, uh, <laughs> that, you know, I always tell people I went to, to, I went to grad school for a strength and conditioning, but I, in reality, I learned how to cook, you know, cause it was all about how to survive, you know? So, um, but yeah, actually, um, Mike DeMarco, who, who does our social media, um, we, we've, we've, as a staff, we all kind of send them some content. So uh, I just, um, like I cooked the meal, I cooked, ste it was steak and uh, vegetables and rice. And um, I took like pictures throughout the process. And then I recorded like voice memos of me, like describing what I was doing in those pictures. Send all those to the, all those to Mike. Mike edited it, put it all to one. It's like a seven minute video. And I think he actually posted it yesterday. So, but that was like, that was what I did with an you know, example of what I did with the team. Um, but with them, what we did, we talked about, I actually had our, our nutritionist come on the call, but we talked about, you know, um, who has an oven, who has a stove, who has, you know, who doesn't have anything to cook with. And then we we're able to give them ideas on, okay, well, if all you have is an oven, this is how you're going to cook X, Y, Z. If all you have is a stove, this is how you cook X, Y, Z. So like that type of thing. And we, we broke it down, um, you know, proteins, fats, carbs, et cetera. So, um, yeah, just trying to give them some some ideas, and actually, it's it's, it's interesting too because like one of our girls, actually two of our girls, have been texting me now multiple times throughout the week with stuff they've been cooking. So I, I know that's that cool. That's at least a start, right? So oh, for um, sure. So yeah. So has anybody impressed you with some like recipe they've banged out? Where you're, now they need maybe well, the need fact, to say, the, yeah, maybe the, you can the make fact, that for me. The, the fact that they uh, actually were able to cook something edible is impressive. <laughs> impressive we're starting with the basics, yeah, right? Fundamentals. Yeah. You know, and, and then took the time to take a picture and then send it to me. Like that's, that's, that's a, that's a home run right there. That's so. a win right there. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Um, but we've been going back and forth. I've been sending them some stuff and, and whatnot, just to give them some ideas as well. So it's been good. Nice. It's been good nice. to kind of, you know, not, you know, communicate with them in a little bit of a different role too. You know, as opposed to just always being in the weight room and seeing them only in the weight room or in practice. Um, we have a nutritionist who's great, but just having, you know, these, like I said, more like life life skills or life lesson type type things. Um, we even talked about like, we even talked about like how to improve the credit score one time, you know. So just all these things that they have no idea of um, that they're going to be thrust into at some point. Um, we, we've gone over all, all of that. So, yeah. And a lot, a lot of times I let them, like I ask them, what do you guys want to know? What do you want to learn? I let them tell me, and then I'll put together a little present, mini presentation on it and go from there. So that's cool. they really drive a lot of it. Nice. Well, and there's, there's always the fact that that bond is going to come back mm -hmm. and translate into what you're doing in the weight room anyway, or what exactly. you do as a team. So, yep. um, that just makes tons of sense. Yep. Um, Question back to um, the videos you were talking about putting together. Yeah. Um, I know we ch chatted earlier in, week, in the week. Is that part of that then library of resources you're putting together in terms of? Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I've done, you know, some specifically for women's basketball, which are more, like I said, more like follow along videos. So they're a little bit longer, but all of our staff, um, for most of our staff has, has done, um, like we did something similar for women's soccer this past, um, this past year, we'll be, we uploaded everything to a YouTube page. So that way if they had a question, um, they could go to that page and look at and see a video of, um, of a, of a particular exercise. So what we want to do is create, 
an online, like a, a one-stop shop where every athlete that we work with can go to this one source um, and, and get whatever they need. So that makes sense. Um, so then, and I'm sure you've thought about this a fair amount, as we start to ramp back up, like in some ways you just kind of have this extended off season, but mm-hmm. like, has that already changed though? How you're thinking about getting back into training once, once yeah. you can? Yeah, for sure. And and it's, it's evolving daily. I mean, um, I had a conversation with our, I mean, with our coaching staff every, every Wednesday and this past Wednesday, um, as of right now, they, um, don't think that we, our kids will be back on campus until August 14th at the absolute earliest. So that, you know, that takes away all of June and July, which is really our main heavy training sessions with me, um, or during the summer. So, uh, as I, as I said, I wasn't as concerned about the immediate postseason. Uh, as we get into the summer, I become more concerned. Uh, and also, um, we're also waiting to see what the, you know, what the NCAA is going to allow and not allow, because that's the other, there's a lot of unknowns. That's the hard thing. Yeah, there's a lot of question marks. Yeah, you know, so like right now, like we can't do a virtual workout where I can, where I, I can't log on like we're doing right now and watch them work out. Like that's a, that would be a violation. Now I would, I would anticipate that changing over the summer, but we don't know um, if it's gonna change or what it's gonna change to, or if it's gonna be limited by time or how many workouts you can do, that type of stuff. So that really is gonna, um, determine a lot in terms of what we can do because obviously we want to maximize the time that we're given. Um, so sure. that's 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 an unknown. Um, there's still an unknown of you know when we actually can come back. I mean that's just a a, a, a date right now, but it could move up or back um, either way. So yeah, uh, that's why we we uh, when, I, when I had my conversation with the coaches this week and, and that came to light. That's why I was like, okay, we need to maybe send our kids a couple more things if we can. Um, just because, you know, initially I wanted to send them some stuff just to get them to, through to the summer. But now knowing right. that they're most likely not going to be on campus at all this summer, let's see if we can get them. Like I said, we, we, we sent them a jump rope and um, some of those sliders to, to be able to just to expand what I can give them. And then hope. now the other piece to that is I'll be able to, as we get into the summer, I'd like to think I'll be more comfortable having them go outside and do some stuff. Um, sure. That's also been a limitation now, but um, but yeah, it's really like I said, it's really evolving. That's it's like I can, it's like you got to have B, C, D, E all the way down to Z because you don't really know what what's going to happen, you know, and, and how much time you're going to get. And, and so yeah, I mean, so to answer your question, I, I've thought about it, but I, I don't, I haven't. It's, it's it's in that phase where I can go a number of different directions depending depending sure. depending on what happens, you know. So. Well, yeah, that's no, concern me for sure. Yeah, th- because there's no date. Like you can't. I don't know how one can fundamentally plan mm-hmm. really anything. Like you can, you can almost think about how you're going to go about that process. Yep. But exactly. Yeah. Until until someone can put a stake in the ground, because one of the one of the other challenges I think that's going to be really in, you know I'm not smart enough to figure it out, but as as far as a solution is so. You know, with you guys in the Big Ten, right, mm-hmm. and Jersey being hit really hard, right, a lot of the schools that you'd be competing against, right, so yeah. take Nebraska here in Lincoln, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Relatively speaking, no disrespect to anybody that's experienced some challenges, like, we just haven't had it as hard. Yeah, so no, for sure. We could it's open up, I shouldn't say we, but geographically, yeah, Nebraska could open up, I mean, we don't even have a shelter in place. So, so even, we even could that open right up there, earlier. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So technically people can get together like, you know, five V five, whatever, and just at least play. Um, where that's not an so that's an advantage. So how yeah, do you start the, is, yeah. even yeah. out? I have no idea. It seems worth pointing out, I don't have a solution. Yeah, no, I, I sports, think, you know, so. Yeah, and that's the thing. And, and so on one end, it's like, okay, well, everyone's kind of dealing with the same thing. Um, my, my, I guess, biggest concern is going to be when we do finally get the team back. Uh, and even even if um, 
they are able to work out on their own. They're still they're not going to work out the same intensity that they would with me standing and standing, you know, right next to them and, and telling them what to do and instructing them. So, um, you know, when they come, when they do finally come back, like that, that to me is a more concern of, of how how do we approach that? That's that's kind of what's next on our as a staff as a department. Um, coming up with um we actually you know came up with a draft already of what that might look like um just because you know it, it's got it, it can't be what it's always it can't be what has been in the past you know it can't be like they show up in september and then three weeks later we start practice you know like um without you know you know uh, having that eight week prep period of primarily where they do strength and conditioning primarily um, I'm, I'm really concerned about not just us. I mean, everybody across the board, you know, injuries going skyrocketing. Um, so that, that's a big concern. So it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out and what the NCAA's thoughts are on that as well as we as we move forward and what the Big Ten conference, what the conference's thoughts are, you know. Uh, no question. Because so, no you also question. know, I, you know, coaches are going to want to make up for lost time, you know. And, and oh, like um, that's just yeah, that, that's just the, that's just the nature. I mean, both. I mean, but that's just the nature of you know uh, of of coaching is you know our, our kids are and, and you know I can tell you our coach in particular. I mean, she's she's go 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 go. So this is sure. this right now just having a whole back is like you know we're we're we're, we're behind as it is <laughs> normally. So you know we're gonna be way behind now. And so that's another piece to, to factor in is you know. Um, keeping everybody calm and, and I think really really the, the as a strength coach the the relationship you've been able to hopefully create with your your coaching staff is going to be really key as you as we come back from this you know and and having a, a being able to have honest honest and um you know honest dialogue about hey you know I know we normally go hard you know, we go hard this these last two weeks of September, but maybe we need to push that back. You know, maybe we need to, you know, they're not maybe may, just understand they're not going to be in the best shape. You know, assuming the season starts on time like like it normally would. You know, maybe we have to adjust what we do. So, um, yeah, it'll be it's going to be interesting as we navigate this. It really will be. Well, and and in, in particular, if you don't navigate it well. You're just gonna end up shooting yourself in the foot because, mm-hmm. like, I mean, as we've discussed a million times, like, there's all sorts of science to point out the fact that if you push too hard and build too much too quickly, your risk just goes way up. Well, you know, I, you know what I'm gonna actually use? I'm gonna use the whole flatten the curve analogy with our coaching staff. You know, because um, everyone's nice. seen that, and that's the same thing yeah. with training, right? It's it's. You know what's the whole purpose of what's the, what's the purpose of flattening trying to flatten the curve, right? It's you're you're not necessarily you're actually in doing that you're actually extending the amount of time that we deal with the virus, right? So training is no different, right? You 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 you're you're extending the amount of time that's needed for 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 the training period, but in doing that, you know. You, you're not going to overwhelm the healthcare system. Same thing. You're not going to overwhelm your body. You push too fast too soon. You're going to do the same thing. You know. So that's actually I've been I've been actually working on that. That's going to be how I'm going to present uh, our return to play to our coaching staff because I know that it's going to be fresh in everybody's mind. Everyone's seen that. And I think that that'll be something that they will be able to to resonate with. So um, so yeah, we'll see. We go into sort of that return to play mode. Um, are you going to use any, and this doesn't have to be an elite form comment, but any like historical data that you already have to sort of point out to coaches how you plan on building back up or is that well, part of your communication? Um, yes and no. Um, I, I do believe that at least with my particular coaches, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at a point where they, like if I tell them like that this is what we need to do, like they, they know you got it. They, they may not agree with it or want to do it, or even though they may say like, you know what, like you're right, but we're not doing that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but I, I think that they, they, like I, I'm, I'm past the having to convince them that, you know, what I'm, what I'm proposing is, is the best, you know, scenario. 
Um, so I do have that going for me. But yeah, I mean, I definitely want to bring up, you know, the whole, you know, the NFL when they went on strike a couple of years ago. Um, and those are professional athletes who were supposed to be working out on their own. Um, you know, that year there was a, a, a rash of injuries. I mean, injuries shot up, went through the roof that particular year. And it was, again, like they weren't, they weren't physically prepared. And those are professional athletes right so right uh, and it's the same thing it's not saying that they weren't working out but they're not going to work out to the same degree to the same intensity as if they had their trainer working there with them so our kids are going to be the same way you know so i definitely will point to that um obviously you know there, there's there's a the ncaa put some return to play guidelines uh, out last summer um and so I, I definitely think those would be something to lean on as well uh, for everybody in terms of what they had recommended and, and uh, after a they were more for after a extended you know layoff or you know extended period of, of not training so um, those would be things those would be like in terms of documentation those would be things that I'll, I'll, I'll look at but it's really I think you know I know our, our girls very well um, aside now we do have five new new players coming in too that I don't know very well but in terms of our returners I know I know where they should be and what it looks like when they are in shape. So I, I think I'll be able to, you know, at least with them, be able to dial back or dial, know when to dial back or dial up based on what I see from them, if that makes sense. Um, where the, the newcomers, it'll be a little bit more challenging, especially, you know, like, that's my, my you know, uh, I'm really, I'm really concerned about our newcomers missing the summer because that's really when we lay the foundation, when I lay the foundation with them for, really everything we're going to do you know so that'll be a new challenge as well is how do i because uh, with them you don't know what they where they're coming from you know in terms sure. of the training background right um and we still may add you know i know the ncaa is going to vote on this <coughs> excuse me this little transfer not having to sit out after you transfer type thing and if that passes we may add some transfers at the last minute too so um yeah, there's like I said, there's, there's a lot of unknowns right now in terms of. Right. Um, so, are you what, having what's gonna be? Uh, more conversations with your your new incoming athletes just to try to get some semblance of a sense of, of so for what yeah, their training not, age, for lack of a better term, is. Yeah. So not not um, really. I have we we reached out to all of them um, before all of this happened back in like January, February. Uh, like all of our support staff reached out to them. So, you know, myself, academic advising, athletic training, um, just to touch base with them. And our, our coaches are big on that too. Of um, You know, they're like, you know, kids these days, you know, they get recruited and then it's like they, they get forgotten about, you know, until they show up. So they, they, they wanted to make a point for all of us to, to touch base with them. Um, just to one, have their contact information make sure they had our contact information and then two um if there's things that we need to get a jump start on like there's medical forms they got to fill out and, and stuff like that that hey let's let's get them started on that now at least put put it in their mind now that hey you know you're gonna need to do xyz we're telling you now so we're not bump bombarding you with everything in june <laughs> excuse me so um i have had some conversations with them but since this all hit, I have not. You know, the plan oh, really? is, I think, the plan is, I, I believe, right now, and part of that was because I didn't know NCAA was, because they shut things down for a while, and then they opened things back up. So we didn't really know. There's a lot of unknowns here. So sure, um, back, to, back to the whole moving target of all Exactly, of yeah. So the, the plan is um, they're going to be sent the same equipment as well. Um, because normally, right, like normally I, I can't train them until they get on campus and have a physical. Well, oh, that's not going to happen, true. right? You know, so. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, so they're, they're um, and I normally keep them separate from the team. Like they'll lift separately um, twice a week and then with the, as a team three, three days a week. Um, so obviously I won't have that. So I, I have to figure out how I'm going to handle them uh, as well. So um, yeah, that that's next. That'll be in the next coming weeks. Is is uh, reaching out to them and, and and seeing where they're at. And and uh, I know right now they're they're still working to the academic side of it, because um, I don't I don't know if it's been statewide or or, or or not. But I know like some I think some states have 
said, I don't know if it's nationally or not, but I know some places have said you don't you don't have to take the SAT this year, and others may not have said that. Um, so I know like we had some kids that just took a placement test, and so they're working through what the classes are going to look like in the summer and all that type of stuff. So I want to get their academics taken care of first, and then once they have sure. that set in, and then they're squared away with that, and then we can start adding in again this next layer of, okay, Strength and conditioning, what do you have, you know, and I'll probably do the same thing. I'll probably send them that same questionnaire that I sent the rest of the returners and, and see what they have available to them and then go from there. They'll, I'll be checking with them obviously more, more frequently than I will the returners. Um, but again, like I said, just kind of waiting to see what, what that was going to, what's that, what that's going to look like from the NCAA in terms of how much contact we can have. So, right. Well, yeah, I mean, it's back to, it's hard to structure a plan when you don't know what the rules yep. are. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. Are you giving thought to? Um, I, I think I'm hung up a little bit on on sort of your newcomers, so I'll ask this one question and get mm -hmm. off that subject. But is there a sense of sort of an assessment that you're thinking about sending out just to get some basic sense of of where they're at, or yeah, is that even doable? And that's the thing. Like, it's normally I would assess them as soon as they come in, but um, like what I I probably will do some type of assessment, but what it'll probably be would be more like have them record themselves and send it to me so I can look at it and then provide feedback. Um, but yeah, even at that, I, I'll have to get creative in terms of how I'm going to, like I haven't even gotten down that road in terms of what they're going to do yet. Um, because then the other piece of it is what, you know, what equipment do they have? Right, not have right. Oh, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so it's like, like you said, like I have, I have, I have literally plan A through Z, like in my head, and based on as more information becomes available, um, then we can say, okay, well, we're gonna go this route or that route. So, um, ideally, I, I typically do would do some type of of a, a number of assessments. You know, when they first come in, um, some of them obviously we won't be able to do, but um, but I'll, I'll, and others, I'll, I'll see if I can find a way to adapt them or where they can do them on themselves and then at least um, self-report that data or, or, like I said, video themselves doing something or and, and let me take a look at it. Yeah, because one of the things, like, when you were when you were walking through that that popped into my, my mind was, um, I don't know if you remember this, but when you were at, at New Mexico mm -hmm. and I came down, you guys were just working a simple ladder and you and I were discussing basically mm -hmm. how well people I remember that yeah. move, right? Yeah. Um, but I suppose you could tape, tape squares on the floor. I mean, you know, I'm just thinking, how would you, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, do something yeah. as simple as that? Because um, yeah. it's not like those kids are going to unravel a speed ladder most of the time. Yeah, and, and what I would probably do, I probably wouldn't even do, like, I, I probably wouldn't even do something like that with them. I'd probably try to give them some type of baseline conditioning assessment so even if that's hey you know if you have a most most kids now have a some type of tracking system on their phone or, or their watch or a fitbit where they can track their distance and it may, it may even just be hey i want you to you know run five minutes you know the old the old school you know five minute run and, and go back and tell me how far you ran you know what i mean like that may be what yeah. we have to what i have to go to just to get the great some idea totally yeah. That. Yeah. yeah yeah man so just to get some idea of what you know where they're at um you know um uh, you know uh, for the movement stuff I, i'd probably just have them you know hey let me see you know video yourself yourself doing a couple squats doing a couple push-ups, you know, bodyweight squats, some push-ups, just to, that'll at least start to give me an idea of, you know, hey, like, this girl can't do a push-up, or this girl, she can bang out, she, bang, she can bang out 10 push-ups, you know, and they look pretty good, versus, hey, she struggled with one, you know, um, right. and what's your, what, what's your squat look like, um, that'll, that'll at least give me some ideas of, okay, these are some things that, you know, um, I think you probably need to work on more specifically, um, so yeah, but uh, yeah, like I said, I, I don't know what it's going to be right now. It's just um, coming up with it as, as, like I said, as more information becomes available. So sure, sure. So segue a little bit. Like, what are you doing with some of this time just for you? Like, it's like yeah, coaching wise, or just, um, I've always wanted to figure out how to cook the bake Alaskan, and I'm going for it. Like, what, <laughs> what do you have going on? Yeah, uh, we're definitely catching up on sleep, <laughs> for sure. You know, um, 
So I get it in six. Well, and that's, uh, that's I normally get, I used to get the four, you know, so. Well, there you go. Um, so I, uh, I live, you know, it's about an hour commute from to work each day, each each direction. So I, I typically, it, it will depend on time of day, obviously. It, it can be as, as short as 35 minutes or I've, it's taken me over two hours, two hours at times to get home as well. So on average, I say about an hour. So on average, I spend, I typically spend about two hours a day in the car. So just waking up from eliminating that, I can now still sleep this uh, i can get two more hours of sleep i can wake up at six and it's still early right um so it's just not elimin- more like early but it's early yeah no exactly yeah so um just eliminating that has, has been good honestly so what i've done is you know and i said in my mind i was like you know and i've always i've i've had kind of like a daily routine now for probably about seven or eight years now um that i that i, that I stick to for the most part and and um, so what I said to myself was, you know, what I'm going to do is I normally spend two hours in a car, right? So I'm going to take one of those hours and, and get up in the morning and get outside and do, you know, um, some cardio, some fitness, um, just so I'm not cooped up in the car, in the house all day. And, um, and, and also like, I want, also want to avoid people as much as possible too. That's also why, you know, there's not as many people out at 6:30 in the morning as there will be at, at nine or 10. Right. So. Um, so yeah, I get up and um, I get up and I go outside first thing in the morning. Um, I'll do, you know, I have my aerobic days and my anaerobic days, right? So um, a couple days a week, I'll do just like a, a long, and I, it's, unstru- it's structured, but it's unstructured. It's kind of how I feel that day. Um, so like my, I'll do a long walk from t- between two, um, but I'll listen to, po- I actually, so I got into podcasting this year. So I never really was a podcast guy. Actually, your podcast was the first podcast I, I listened to. So kudos to you. But um, I listen to a podcast, and then you know, and then my other two days are more higher intensity um, days. So they're you know I'm not out there as, as much, but I'll do like maybe some intervals, um, jog for thirty seconds. A whole other conversation too, <laughs> like the quality of nutrition information. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the hours of discussion. Oh, yeah. So which one do you mind saying which one you're reading? Yeah. Um, it's a book called rich food, poor food. And what it is, it's, it's, um, it's really a guide for the grocery store. Um, but it's, it's not like the thing I like about it is it's really scaled for to have mass appeal so like so for people who are like okay who are really into like wanting to to eat well um and you can really kind of geek out on on some of the stuff in there um but it also gives like okay well i'm still gonna eat my hot dogs or i'm still gonna eat you know this or that it gives you okay well these are a better option a better 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 variety of hot dog or a better variety of of deli meat etc oh that's interesting Um, so yeah but the whole thing is about um how the current system um food delivery system agriculture is is depriving our the nutrient value or driving the nutrient value down in our foods and so what you typically find most people eat are what are called poor foods they're poor in nutrient density and they don't even know it They, they might think that it's healthy because you know it's a vegetable or it's a fruit but in reality, it, it may not be. So it gives you kind of what some things to look for in terms of packaging. That, what I was going to sorry, what I was going to ask is, yep. is that even the case of like sort of apples to apples is probably a horrible pun as well. But yeah. so you you think you are buying like a a quality item, but mm-hmm. because of say it's it's uh, factory farmed or mm-hmm. mass produced. That very same item, apple to apple, doesn't contain the nutrient value. Is that is that what it's getting to? Yeah, or that, that you think that it that it might. Yeah, exactly. So okay. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think as as an example, um, where it shows you like what to look for in terms of like, um, like for example, like oranges, for example, right? So the generally speaking the larger an orange is the the more ripe it is and the more nutrients it has 
generally generally speaking so like if you're looking for orange oranges you want to look for like deeper colored larger oranges right now you still want to look at the labeling and the pack and the packaging as well in terms of whether it's organic or not and that type of stuff but like for like tomatoes it's the opposite smaller tomatoes are more nutritious than, than the larger ones right so just things like that or even like um how food is in process and cooked right so some foods actually increase your nutrient content when they're heated right that's why some foods are better eaten raw um for example broccoli kale um spinach and then some foods lose their nutrient density when they're when they're heated right so the, the tomato example tomatoes actually become more nutrient dense when you heat them so from that standpoint um canned tomatoes are just as nutritious if not more nutritious than your fresh tomatoes oftentimes because they're heated in that process especially if they're out of season right so that's something that you would think typically you think fresh is better than canned right sure not necessarily, sure. Not, not necessarily. um that's one example where it may not be right um but the, the really the thing i really like is they break down the packaging and like the cause they, they call it billboards right they're like packaging is is is, is advertisements and you know, they, they break down like each category, like each aisle of the store. So like your dairy aisle, your produce aisle, what to look for and, and what, um, how, how companies may use certain phrases to make you think that something is healthy when it actually doesn't really mean anything. Right. Uh, so they break down, like, I, I can't remember exactly, but like, okay, you see like cage free eggs, even a natural person would think, Oh, that's a healthier egg than et cetera. Where, well, right what cage free actually means is that they have access to out to an outdoor space five minutes a day. That's what it can mean. So they may only be out, you know, outside of that or cage free for five minutes out of the day. Now that doesn't mean that they're not, but that could be the truth. And so it could be that. So it could be potentially misleading. Yeah. Yeah. Versus free range. If something says free range, that there's a whole different set of stipulations that, that you know is going to be much much better than just cage free as an example gotcha. right so just, just something like that gotcha just to confirm because someone has asked it uh the title of that book is is rich food poor food yeah rich food poor food it's by uh, i forget the names carlton maybe it's a hub, husband and a wife and the husband has like multiple doctorates in nutrition and the wife is a is a chef so like they know what they're talking about but um it, it, and it, it breaks down like the first half of the book it breaks down you know what are what to look for in, on an ingredient list like when you see xyz what this actually means like how companies hide sugar right so like you know you might see organic brown, brown rice syrup that's well, really just sugar right so you might think oh it's right. organic and maybe it's a it's a slightly healthier it's, it may exactly be not the marketing the team regular yeah you know so the marketing like team got a hold of it yeah yeah and they break it down how like or like um i don't again i don't want to i could talk about this all day because i'm really into this but like um there was a uh i can't remember what it was but there was a, a some type of ingredient that was in gatorade that they were getting flack over for having in their product so they took it out but they're like so they took it out of the gatorade but gatorade also the same company is pepsi and they have the same product in their Pepsi. So it's like they're saying, oh, like, look at us. Like, we're being good by taking the product out, the, this ingredient out over here. But the rest of our parent companies still have it, you know, because the average consumer doesn't know who owns what or that Pepsi and Mountain Dew are the same company, you know. Sure. Well, so, plus there's the fact that if you if you looked at an ingredient list for a can of Coke, mm -hmm. it's, A, it's long. B, yep. like, it's chemicals, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so no one knows what they're looking at most of the time anyway. Yep. So, so yeah, yeah. Let's so probably play down. that game. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, morning, do some type of professional development. Um, you know, whatever, you know, right now I'm working on our policy and procedure manual. Um, all of us are, um, so we all have different sections of it. Um, so like I do, I'll do, I worked on that, you know, this morning I had meetings set up every, you know, almost every day I have a meeting. Um, so like Tuesday, I check in with my, my, uh, direct supervisor, Van Dyke, who was on your, your podcast earlier. Um, shout out to then, Dave. Yep. And then, uh, and Frank, and then, uh, Tuesdays are, are meetings with Van Dyke. Um, 
Wednesdays, I meet with our, our women's basketball coaching staff, and uh, I meet with uh, Kevin, who's who's um, an employee who I one of our strength coaches who I directly oversee. And then Thursday, we have our today we had our uh, our interns meet every Thursday. Um, Becky runs our internship program, so we had that meeting this morning. Um, and then Friday, I meet with our team. So I have a standing meeting every day of the week, pretty much. So um, so we've got those going on, and then. Like this Monday, I've got we're doing a phone call or a video chat with all the all the women's basketball strength coaches in the Big Ten. So we're gonna do that on Monday. Um, so every like Monday is my day that I typically try to have some type of um, like outside of our staff development. It's like this past Monday, I chatted with you for you know hour and a half, two hours, right? Um, right. Next next Monday, I'm gonna do the 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 chat with the you know the, the all the shrimp coaches in the big 10 so i try to schedule those on monday so that way i have something every day um but yeah i'll work on that in the morning do lunch and then um in the afternoon I, I focus that more on women's basketball specific stuff so working on their programs um you know right now like i met with our staff i said this past wednesday they wanted me to come up with um three things that each athlete want that that i want that i think each athlete needs to work on but they wanted, you know, one to be from not a non strength and conditioning, you know, um, something that wasn't from strength and conditioning. So I gave them, I gave them two, you know, things from my area, but then one thing that I may see maybe on the court or out elsewhere that's not specific to my area. So I worked that's on that. Cool. Yeah, I worked on that this afternoon. And um, so, so yeah, that, always, there's always something. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like? So one of the things that I often think about is it sometimes seems like a shame that strength co coaches are not more included in the overall, I'll call it, sport process. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is that something that you really look forward to is providing that one area that you're seeing on the court that, that maybe you would have never been asked about before? Or maybe, and maybe that's so, not fair, but... Well, that, that's fine what I'm saying. Uh, no, you're right. You're 100% right. And I'll, I'll backtrack and I'll, I'll tell you, when I first got here, that wasn't the case, you know, at all. You know, and actually there was probably, a, if anything, it was a, a strained relationship between our department and, and specifically women's basketball. So that was a, a relationship that I, I've been working to repair over the last three seasons. And um, if you look at where we're at now to where we were when I first started, I mean, we're leaps and bounds um, headed in, in a much better direction in terms of, like I said, we meet every week, you know, I'm able to give them input and, and whatnot. And then now to the, like, to the point where they're asking me like, Hey, what do you, what do you see? What do you think? You know? Um, and so I have that relationship, not only with the players, but also with the staff as well. So 